Your mic. I thank the uh, chairman for that dubious introduction, but I'm not here to tell you to jump in a lake. I'm here to thank you for having a bipartisan hearing on an incredibly devastating problem. And as uh, Mr. Levin said, we here in the federal government can provide some help, but the hard work is done with first responders, with mayors, with governors. One distinguishing thing about Vermont is we embraced the challenge on a bipartisan basis. The Democratic governor, predecessor to Phil Scott, Peter Shumlin, spoke in his entire address in 2014 about the opioid crisis. And I remember talking to some of my colleagues here saying, Peter, why would you be advertising that bad news? But then as we talked, acknowledging that that was a devastating issue in their own communities. Phil Scott was then Lieutenant Governor. He has taken up the leadership in Vermont now to follow through. And we have this bipartisan approach to trying to address the tragic uh, circumstances of opioid addiction. So I thank all of the members of this committee. Mr. Chairman, thank you for being here. The ranking member, Neil, is here as well. It shows the urgency of this committee. And all of us are ready to work with you. Thank you. And I give you the governor of the state of Vermont, my friend, former Lieutenant Governor, now Governor, uh, Phil Scott of Middlesex, Vermont. Barry. Governor, Governor, you're recognized. Thank you for being here. Thank you very much, and uh, thank you, Congressman Welch. We served together in the Senate uh, not long ago. Uh, Chairman Roskam, Ranking Member Levin, I do know your son. I played hockey with him uh, a few years ago. He's a very good hockey player. And members of the subcommittee, I want to thank you for the honor of appearing before you today. My Secretary of Human Services, Al Gobey, Commissioner of Health, uh, Dr. Mark Levine and Director of the Blueprint for Health, Beth Tansman, are here with me as well. As was mentioned, uh, in Vermont, the governor and lieutenant governor are elected separately. So in 2014, when then-Governor Peter Shumlin, a Democrat, devoted his State of the State address to the opioid epidemic, I was sitting there listening as the Republican lieutenant governor. And I must admit, I was more than just a bit skeptical. I was concerned calling so much attention to this problem would damage our image and hurt our state. And sure enough, initially, many at the national level portrayed this as only a Vermont problem. We now know all too well this was and is a national problem. Governor Shumlin was right to focus our attention on this epidemic. And I have since learned that the incredible devastation opioids have had on our state and our people. I have met countless Vermonters impacted by addiction, some in recovery, some still struggling, and some who have had their families torn apart, changing their lives forever. We have made a lot of progress in Vermont, much of it with support from you and our federal partners. Although today, I approach you humbly because we have not yet solved this problem. Even with our small population, we see two Vermonters die from a drug overdose every week. And nearly every day, a baby is born exposed to opioids, something I've highlighted as one of the Vermont's biggest challenges. We have some of the best access to treatment in the nation, but too many Vermonters who need treatment have not sought it. And while Vermont's rate of overdose deaths is the lowest in New England, we still lost 106 people in 2016 in 2017, looks like it will be similar. Tragically, we also experience high numbers of children under the age of five who come into state custody due to this crisis. And I think we all would agree, these kids deserve this, don't deserve this. They need a better start. We have focused on what I refer to as the four legs of the stool, prevention, recovery, treatment, and enforcement. On my first day in office, I established by executive order the Opioid Coordination Council. This council is made up of a wide range of perspectives, life experience, and different political philosophies. Importantly, this includes those who have suffered from the addiction it's themselves. I handpicked them and tasked them with providing recommendations to improve Vermont's response in each of the four legs of the stool. We know that too many Vermonters become addicted through prescription pain medication. Therefore, the state implemented strict prescriber rules around pain management in a prescription monitoring system. So for the first time, we are beginning to see a reduction in prescribed opioids. Unfortunately, 
we still prescribe three times as much as we did in 1999. Vermont has also made Narcan widely available to first responders, law enforcement, people with addiction, and family members of those suffering. We have aggressively used a screening, brief intervention, and referral to treatment model, also known as SBIRT, to prevent the progression of addiction. Enfor enforcement is another important piece, but we are all in agreement. We can't arrest our way out of this. Our courts, local police, and state's attorneys have become important partners in addressing this epidemic, and we address it as a public health issue. To treat opioid addiction, Vermont operates a Medicaid medication-assisted treatment, or MAT, system called Hub and Spoke. With the support of our federal partners, we established a health home for Vermonters with opioid addiction. Through well-coordinated and comprehensive services, we treat opioid addiction like we do any other chronic condition. Our hubs provide all FDA-approved medications. They also pro provide critical nursing, counseling, and care management. In our spokes, primary care Office, uh, offices prescribing uh, buprenorphine are supported by nurses and counselors who offer more complete care. Finally, coordination between hubs and spokes assures the patients receive the appropriate level of care as they need it. Vermont and the federal government have been effective partners in tackling health care challenges for many years. It is in this collaborative spirit that I offer four areas where together we can improve our response. First, Medicare needs to treat this as a chronic condition that it is. I've sent a letter to the Secretary of Health and Human Services asking that CMS work with Vermont and engage Medicare in Vermont's hub and spoke system. Working with our federal partners, we hope to develop a path to make this a reality. Second, we need to make sure that ESPER is fully supported within the billing system so Vermont can sustain and expand this important work. Third, we ask you to consider giving states relief from the IMD exclusion, which prohibits using Medicaid funds in mental health or treatment facilities of 16 or more beds. Finally, our small state could benefit tremendously from nationally supported research in the areas of alternative pain treatment and from expanded coverage for alternative chronic pain management. In closing, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to address this committee we have made great progress over the years, but we have much more to do if we are to improve the health of Vermonters and all Americans to truly end this crisis and this epidemic. Thank you. Thank you, Governor.